It's time for the weekly cover price top 10 list. Is it all gloom and doom for comic book market? Well, there's not gloom, but there's definitely doom. Up next on this video from Bronzeville Comics. Hello, panelologists. This is Jim from Bronzeville Comics coming to you with another video. And before we get started, like, comment, subscribe, follow us on the other social medias, my Instagram and my whatnot, my eBay store and my email are all in the description below. Um, check that out. Uh, you can communicate with me, any of those uh, methods. Um, and let's, uh, we're going to do the cover price top 10 list. Those of you who do the list, I do this list every week. Cover price is a, um, and I don't get anything from cover price actually pay for their subscription but every week they do a top 10 list of the top 10 most sold books uh across the platforms that they track now cover price is different than go collect um or uh, gp analysis in that they track both raw and graded sales um and so you get an idea of raw books because let's face it a lot of books aren't graded and a lot of newer books haven't been graded yet so there are newer books in this list. There's some older books, some old friends. Um, and so they put together a top 10 list every week. I break it down, talk about what I think um, of the books on the list. And let's just jump into the list right now. So we're going to start at number 10. And number 10 is Gromits, number one, uh, by Rick Remender and Brian Poshin. Uh, this is the one in 10 David Lapham and Moreno Denisio variant and uh, selling for about $12. And I'll be honest, I have no idea about this book. Um, there was a cover a, there was a one in 25, a one in 20. So why is this so hot? Let's take a look at what cover price has to say. This book nailed the nostalgia of the eighties. Hmm. Stranger things much submerging itself into the punk rock and skateboarding culture. A huge demographic lived through this time period and is still picking up books, making it a must have title. Yes. Most comic book collectors are old. The eighties are not a distant memory this or before we were born as it is for some of you. This 1 in 10 variant nails the period's aesthetic, further drawing in fans. It doesn't hurt that the ad adaptation rumors are already spinning, causing fans to hit the aftermarket in search of a copy. We tracked 19 copies, uh, yada, yada, yada. It's new. It came out um, last week. So um, eh, maybe you could pick up a copy at the LCS. I don't know. Uh, I wouldn't go, again, these new books, uh, The Flash, in the pan, uh, hot FOMO book of the month, I would be a little wary of. If you see one at your LCS for cover price, it might be worth picking up. And again, adaptation rumors, this is a little early on. And as we know, uh, we can look at like 100 properties of independent books that have been optioned. And I mean, we're talking, you know, everything from Oblivion Song to We Live to um, Shadecraft to Something is Killing the Children. And... They're not all out there. And even when they are adapted, uh, you have things like um, Paper Dolls, which lasted the season then went goodbye. So not everything is going to be the next Walking Dead uh, or uh, The Last of Us. So maybe it's only zombies. I don't know. There's other stuff. But let's go to number nine on the list, Blood Hunt. Uh, this is number two. The Logan Lubera Crime Suspense Story 16 homage, which is a 1 in 25. And look, these high-grade copies are still close to $200. For this thing, I mean, you're going to have to pay three digits in almost any grade. It, this is just going crazy. Uh, I think I would not buy into the frenzy. I would not be paying $200 for this book. Um, if you could get it for like, you know, ratio price 25, I would I would probably buy it and sell it. Maybe I'd slam it. So let's take a look at um, what cover price has to say. This book has been on the list for a couple of weeks. Uh, came out of the gate crazy hot. Fans are excited Marvel to embrace a m more major title that has been sorely lacking from their lineup. They did one better. Releasing classic Golden Age horror homages as variants. Issue number two got the same treatment with this one in 25 also as an homage, but this time featuring Wolverine. The mutant has knives attached to his hands for Pete's sake, so obviously he's well acquainted with blood and guts. He's a perfect mascot for the series, piquing fans' interest. Um, now, one thing I would be a little bit aware of Issue one, issue two, that uh, Thor severed head for number one. Um, this book for number two, I imagine, I think it's already been to FOC. Um, for upcoming issues in the series, if they do more variants um, that are um, homages 
to these, I think more people are going to be ordering them. Um, you know, it might still be worth getting if you can get it for um, a, a decent price. Um, you know, is it worth ordering 25 of cover A just to get this? I don't know. Um, but be aware that more and more collectors are going to be putting this on their FOC um, to have it available when it comes and have it in their pull box. Let's go to number seven. And this is an older book, New X-Men 133, the first appearance of Dust. This is from that Grant Morrison run on New X-Men, which started with, what is it, 114? The first appearance of um, Cassandra Nova. It also includes Negasonic Teenage Warhead. Um, so here uh, we have an Islamic mutant uh, with a hijab uh, that we see on the cover. Um, this is a book I picked up a lot. You can get it for like 10 bucks, 5 bucks. Sometimes it's hard to get in high grade, even though it is from 2022 paper quality, eh, but that dark cover uh, is unforgiving if you're going to get it graded. Um, and speaking of getting it graded, we can see here it's been selling consistently like in the two to two hundred fifty dollar range recently a two hundred eighty dollar sale, even a two hundred eighty style sale back in September. Um, somebody went bananas and bought one. It was going upwards of nine hundred dollars um, two years ago during the comic boom. So let's say number eight, um, first appearance of Soraya Kadir, a.k.a. Dust, one of Marvel's earliest, if not first, traditional Muslims to feature her religious head covering in the quab. Her powers are pretty self-explanatory. She can transform her body into a cloud of dust. But what causes fans to seek out her first appearance is the blink-and-you-miss-it moment. With the conclusion of X-Men 97 Season 1, the theory machine was booted up and immediately started working overtime. During the final episode, the fan base caught a glimpse of a Big board forge put together a potential future teammates of the X Men. Most recognize the likes of Colossus or Havoc, but Dust was a minor surprise. So, this is again X Men 97 spec. Um, will Marvel and the MCU play off of some of that into what they're going to use in live action for the X Men? That remains to be seen, but that's a much longer spec run. Um, I have several copies of this. Um, I've been picking this up for a couple of years. Every time I see it for, you know, a, 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 like $10 or less, essentially. And sometimes you get it in dollar bins. Uh, and I haven't yet submitted a copy. I haven't, um, I probably have a couple in my clean and press pile, but uh, you want a 9.8. However, this particular book, um, what does a 9.6 go for? Yeah, th th this is the difference. And this is true of modern books. And this is a modern book. It's from 2002. There is a newsstand of this, um, but there's, look at that exponential jump, you know, uh, fair market value 53, five times that to the fair market value of a 9.8. So you need this in a 9.8. Um, and if you find this in a high grade newsstand, um, there really aren't, you know, one, one went for $300 in 2020. So, uh, that, you know, remains to be seen. Let's go to number seven. All Select Comics, 70th anniversary uh, special. This is going for like 30 bucks. And if we look at the slabs, there's only four in the census. One sold in 2016 for $16, a 9.8, that is. Um, yeah, this is the uh, a reprint of the first appearance of Blonde Phantom. And there have been these, I would say, unsubstantiated rumors. Where are we? Um, unsubstantiated rumors of Taylor Swift playing Blonde Phantom. Again, I think um, people are just jumping down that Taylor Swift rabbit hole. While nothing is quite confirmed yet, the rumor mill is certainly churning. Recently, it's been speculated that Marvel aims to develop a Blonde Phantom TV series for Disney Plus with the ultimate familiar Taylor Swift eye to portray Louise Mason. There are also rumors it could be Sydney Sweeney. It's also conjecture currently, but that hasn't stopped fans from securing the most readily available copy that's not a Golden Age key that pertains to the character. The, there was also the sensational She-Hulk book uh, that's her first modern appearance. Developments could come fast. This is just total spec. Total, like, maybe this will happen. Um, I mean, I think it's really a stretch. You're going to have a blonde phantom TV series with Taylor Swift. Um does Taylor Swift have time to do a TV, Disney Plus TV series? And I am uncertain. I don't want to get the Swifties mad at me. 
but I'm cer uncertain about the acting abilities of Ms. Swift. Great songwriter, uh, wonderful musician, uh, amazing entertainer, but unproven as an actress. I mean, let's face it. She was in Cats. Um, there were some great actors in Cats, but I, I don't think she's um, separated herself. Also, Sydney Sweeney. Sydney Sweeney speculated for everything. Um, I've only really seen her in White Lotus, which was okay, and in Madam Web, which she was weak. Um, I, I I haven't watched Euphoria. Um, I know there are reasons that people enjoy her performance in Euphoria, but again, I haven't seen enough of her work to be um, have her acting chops proven to me. But that's just limited experience. Um, I certainly have an open mind to um, the possibility that she could be good. I just think in Madam Web, she was very flat. Um, well, her acting affect, that is. Um, I thought that the other two young actresses much outperformed her in that film. So anyway, let's move on to number six. I think this is kind of like a, a, a really, you know, um, long shot spec. Let's go to number six. New book, Helverine number one. This just came out. This is a spoiler variant. Um, first appearance of Dokken is Helverine. Wolverine's son, first appearance of the Hellfire Warriors. Interesting book. This is out last week. Um, and Wolverine 36, first appearance of Helverine, caught a ton of fans off guard. There was a mad scramble to secure the first appearance of Helverine, capitalizing the fervor it produced. Marvel opted to follow it up with a solo title while fans were preparing for this one, with pre-orders steadily filling up for months. I think I did pre-order this book. One of the big must-haves of the bunch was a spoiler variant from Joshua Kassara featuring a half-Wolverine, half Daken, half son of Wolverine amalgamation. It's fantastic and has done a killer job in sinking its claws into the fan base. Welcome back, Daken. Um... New book, interesting. What life will it have? I don't know. It's still, I mean, you could get it. You could get it for under 20 bucks. You can get it for cover price, certainly. Um, it is a little bit of a spoiler variant. So, you know, I wouldn't go crazy for this. Again, I, I'm always a little bit wary of newer books. Let's go to number five. Doom number one, the Adi Granoff variant. I like this very photo real to cover. I think this is this is a very handsome cover. The eyes are, are wonderfully done by Granoff. Um, and there is a 9.8. That's probably a... a a pre um order uh and there is the va the virgin variant one in a hundred which is uh, very expensive you see here 151 for a near mint copy so this is like a 15 20 copy somebody bought a 9 8 for 90 bucks uh we talked about the doom here i mean we're talking about new doom we're not talking about old doom we're not talking about ff5 or ff annual 2 or marvel superheroes 20 uh or ff84 any of those doom keys doom cover keys um but, you know, I think fans are hungry for Victor Von Doom. Um, while the regular edition of this book has been dominating the top of the charts, this is a stellar consolation prize for those who missed out. It lacks the color and vibrancy the regular cover does, but the book is typical Doom, brooding, dark, and oh so realistic. It's been steadily gaining traction. It's quickly becoming a go-to variant for its title. Um, let's move on to number four. Number four is an interesting one. It's Masters of the Universe number one from DC Comics um, in 1982. Now, remember, DC had the rights to um, Masters of the Universe before Marvel did. The Star Comics Marvel books came later. This um, was really the third appearance in comics of Masters of the Universe. They appeared in DC Comics Presents 47, crossover with Superman, to kind of promote it. And then they um, there were a number of books that had, I think I, had the, I have a Justice League back here that I just sold last night. Yeah, is it this one? Yes. Um, that uh, is the 16-page um, insert preview. of, And that was in about, I think it was about six or eight DC books from this particular month. And then um, the following month, so this has a November cover date. This has a December cover date, 1982. Um, there was a mini series. Now, sadly, I, for some reason, and I'm not sure why, back in the day, I got the miniseries. I was too old to watch Masters of the Universe. I was, by 1982, um, I was what, a junior in high school. I was sleeping in on Saturday mornings. I was not getting up early enough to eat uh 
you know, Frosted Flakes and watch Saturday morning cartoons. So I never got into Masters of the Universe, unlike some younger collectors did. Uh, and I know there's a huge fan base for it. Um, but uh, we can see here that this is, I, and I, I just sold the whole miniseries for like 20 bucks, 25 years ago or something. Anyway, let's take a look at uh, th this. And this took a roller coaster ride, right? This was always like an expense, a hundred dollar plus book. And then it was one of the early boom books. It jumped up to $800 in May 2021 and stayed in the multiple hundreds um, coming down to 177 But it's kind of settled in this $250 range, I would say. That's kind of where I would put the fair market value of the book. But we can see a lot of copies sold because we've had news. And um, there's a movie coming out, uh, Casting News. Uh, Nicholas Galadzine is set to portray the power sword wielder, the big screen in 2025. That immediately sent fans scrambling to secure arguably his first appearance in a comic. It is not. Uh, there was also a comic that was like a mini insert comic. Um, this was the first book marketed to older kids and not directly tied to a kid's picture book featuring a toy or small appliance on the titles. Um, so, yeah, that uh, this casting news has gotten people riled up. I'm a little bit, um, you know, concerned. I don't know if there's the right word, but a little bit hesitant about what this property looks like on the big screen. They did it once already. And sorry, kids, it was not good. Um, you know, and I think fans of this show who are now um, in their 40s, are going to expect something a little bit more. It's not going to be something that they, I would think would be aimed at kids. Um, and um, the, we'll see, we'll see how they can, they can update it. Um, but uh, you know, something exciting for those eighties kids. Let's go to number three. And it's Sonic the Hedgehog number 69, the Nathan for drain cover R I one in 10. No idea. Um, Let's see what uh, this, why this is. We have yet another Sonic 1 in 10 gracing our list. Seriously, this retailer incentive, that's the RI. It was like, we they didn't go through that many letters that they go through, like the alphabet all the way down to, you know, anyway, like you have covers A through Z and then double A, B, A, B, and so on. Anyway, retailer incentives and going gangbusters in the aftermarket. Well, Sonic may be popular. He's not the biggest commercial driver. That leads LCS to routinely under order to save money and particularly tight economy. So this is true. The retailer incentives are the uh, variance. Um, ratio variants of low print run books, like an amazing Spider-Man book. They're going to be shops are going to order plenty. It's going to be easy to you know, easier to get in uh, ratio variants. But like that's why that um, Firestar cover on Young Allies, Allies uh, by Art Adams. Who's buying Young Allies? Um, under order save money, particularly tight economy. But the ones that do hit that incentive are often rewarded with stunning books like this one from Nathan for drain um, when they inevitably make it to the aftermarket, they tend to see a lot more love than they did on the rack. So if you're a Sonic fan, whatever, it's a retailer incentive. Uh, yet another Sonic one in 10 gracing our lists. Are we going to see, you know, the, the long-term value of this? Uh, wait, uh, I, I don't, I don't see this having a really long-term strength, but if you want to get it and you know, if it's 20 bucks for a one in 10, that's not un, uh, unreasonable. If you're, a Sonic fan. Let's go to number two on the list. X Factor number six, first full appearance of Apocalypse. Um, and we can see here, this is uh, this is a plentiful book. Um, high grade books in the $25, $40, $50 range. And again, I, look at that jump from um, 9.6 to 9.8. It, it is worth about 100 bucks and down in 9.2. But then you really take a jump from 9.6 to 9.8. It's a book from 1986. Let's take a look at the 9.8. So let's, okay, there's X Factor 6. 7,600 universal copies, 299s, no comment there. That's another video entirely. 1,200 or 16% of them are 9.8. So you have a fairly low percentage of 9.8s, even for 1986. But I think this is a book that's highly submitted. Um, but it was highly printed. X Factor was a, a, a high print run book, especially in its early days. Um, but we can see here, just look, look boop, jump up, um, in, in the value, uh, you know, it jumped all the way up. How high did it go during the boom? And it's kind of held its value. I mean, look, went up to $700 and then down to 270 
and now it's up again around 400 a couple $500 sales a thousand dollar sale there's something else there wow wow what that who that that uh let's let's verify that sale let's see what that looks like that even looks like custom label new case a thousand dollars that's insane rare custom label it's not even like a, a whatever <laughs> um somebody made a great sale what can i say anyway um You know, X-Men has been hot. We're cooling down a little bit. We're kind of in that period between the X-Men 97 animated series and the Deadpool Wolverine movie. X-Men 97, huge hit. Teasing Return, Horseman of the Apocalypse, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I don't think we're going to see Apocalypse in live action anytime soon. We had that done and not well in the Fox universe. So um, we'll see. But this is still a nice key and a nice book to get in a 9-8. If you can get it, I would, I've gotten a couple, I have a couple copies sitting in my clean and press piles. Um, one, I think is a really strong nine, eight contender. It was, it was a collection I got where they put backer boards on both sides of the book. I'm like, what is this book? And then I opened it up. It was that, um, that was very high grade. So yeah, wish me luck. Let's move on to number one on the list. And I said there was doom. There is doom. Doom. Number one, this is cover a, we can see, um, 9.8 at the one thirty mark. Um, and this has been, I mean, this has been a, a book that has been on fire. Um, Doom has had numerous one shots in limited series of the past few years. Book has gained the most traction, landed the perfect time, satiating fans need for a competent and threatening villain. It also had a tribute to the late rapper MF Doom, who developed a cult following over the years, much like Dr. Doom. This issue was an instant pickup for numerous fans and a ton more now chasing in the aftermarket. Um, I find it interesting that. We haven't seen, uh, you know, a little bit of an upsurge in the more classic Doom keys. And another thing that's interesting in the market, there has been very little movement um, in the Galactus keys. Um, if they ask 449, kind of stagnant um, from what I've seen. So let's take a look at the runners up, the uh, 11 through 20. And what do we got? The Blood Hunt, number one, again, this Thor cover. Gromit's number one, the one in 20. This is pretty cool with the, um, and this definitely to me has Stranger Thing vibes with the, uh, you know, um, especially for the Max character with the skateboarding and the uh, video game. This was on the um, list last week, the New Mutants 98 new facsimile with the Intuit Lee cover. Spawn one is always going to be there. Um, down to $131 for a 9.8. Wolverine one, um, all those nine nines gaining attention. I can't believe this is back on the list. What is this? Was in the trailer? Um, for the first trailer. And I, I, I saw this as a show a week and a half ago with or at a, the flea market, actually. Bender, I know Dave. I'm like, oh, you found one of these. <laughs> you know, you had a price for like 15 bucks. Um, but yeah, criminal number one. Fans have been brutally happy to know that the movie is still moving forward. Amazon Prime picked up Criminal and now show, bring the show to life as a series. So this is something that was optioned and moved on. This X-Men 24 has been on fire. Another variant of Doom 1. Um, and X-Men 1 Magneto, the Magneto cover. So that does it for this week's cover price top 10 list. Have you picked up any of these books, these new books? Do you have any of these older books in your collection? Let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you think. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for stopping by. You can take a look at a couple of my other recent videos here. And this is Jim saying until next time, enjoy your comics.